Salawam Yasha Allah, his brother Mapathak. That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And this is going to be a quick video just touching on the topic of preaching the gospel. You know, preach the gospel. Right? And um, it's going to be a super quick video. I want to dive right into it before I um I go to this damn plantation. So before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rukakadash. Which is all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, whose name is Jehovah, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the real were ignorantly called Jesus Christ. But we know Him as Jehovah Shai in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, right? The holy angels of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? And I want to give um, double honors to the apostles of um, and the elders of Great Millstone, right? Starting with uh, Apostle Tahar on down, right? Who diligently labor in word and in doctrine, you know, and um. Let's start it off here in 2 Timothy 4th chapter. And I'm going to read verse 2. It says, preach the word. That's plain. Right? We have to preach the word. It says, be instant in season. Meaning, um, I'm going to get the word, right? Go into the, um, the Greek. Right? This word in season, it means seasonably. It means opportunity. When the opportunity occurs. And we always have the opportunity to preach the gospel because the Most High God gave us the unicorn. Right? Which is the internet. Which is a tool that that's, that we use to get this word on the four corners of the earth, you know. This is what the internet is is for, for the gospel to get preached on the four corners of the earth, right? So it says in season, meaning when the opportunity occurs, and out of season. So even when it doesn't really seem like an opportunity to teach, you should still be teaching the scriptures, you know. You should always be teaching the scriptures. You should have an itch to want to teach the scriptures. You see. And it says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And I just wanted to bring that out because it's plain. It says, preach the word in season and out of season. And as a um, as a servant of the Lord, especially one who who's able to go into the scriptures and understand them and break them down, you should be preaching the gospel, man. Right, nonstop. You know, right. It's not enough just to um, the scriptures don't tell us. To pick one day out of the week and preach the gospel, man. Right? To pick two days out of the week to pre uh, preach the gospel. That's why the um the, the elders of Great Millstone, right? They're they're they harp heavily on brothers making these videos, man. Right? Because through this through the through this through this damn phone, right? Through these uh through the unicorn, right? Through the internet, you can preach the gospel daily, right? You can get the words, the word of the Lord on the four corners of the earth. And the real true man of the Lord, we understand that the preaching of the gospel is what's going to usher in the coming of Yahweh Shai. So we're going to want to preach the gospel as much as possible, man. Right? Whatever the spirit jump on us, we're going to be getting in there because we understand how important the preaching is. Right? Let's go to, um, and so like I don't really have anything written down, but let's go to Acts the fifth chapter and um, read Acts 5 and 42. It says, and daily... In the temple. This is speaking about the apostles. Right? It says, and daily in the temple. Let's go into this word daily, right? Right? Um, the day used of natural day or the inter the interval between sunrise and sunset as this uh, as distinguished from contrasted with the night. Right? Um Yeah, I'm uh let's go into the etymology, right? Because I believe they just took that word, took the word day. But if you go into the word daily, it's, it's going into happening or being every day. Right? Happening or being every day. Right? Meaning they're constantly, right? Every day, day by day, preaching the gospel. So it's, it's speaking about the apostles, right? Those that were taught by Yahweh Shai, you know, and ordained by Yahweh Shai. And what did Yahweh Shai tell them to do? He told him to preach the gospel, man. That's in Matthew the twenty eighth chapter, I believe. And um, I'm going to come back here as well. Um, yeah, Matthew twenty eight and verse nineteen. It says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit." That's literally what Yahweh Shai told his um, apostles to do. Hey, man, y'all go and preach the gospel, man. It's it's not that deep, man. Right, this thing is not that deep. We're, we're just, hey, just preach the gospel, man. Prophesy, right? Ushering the coming of our king, Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to Acts the fifth chapter. 
right? And we got to have an itch. We got to love to preach the gospel, right? Elder, Elder Apostle Tahar was just going into it. Um, I believe it was the last Apostle Ministry video, right? When they're on the highways and byways. He was speaking about how he loves preaching the gospel so much. He might be in the kingdom of heaven, getting up, throwing on his garment and ready to go outside and preach the gospel. And the brother might have to tell him, hey, brother, we in the kingdom now. You don't even have to do that no more, man. But that's hey, man. That's a beautiful uh, analogy, man, because that's how much he loves it. And that's that's how much we're supposed to love this thing, man. You know, so this is Acts chapter five and verse 42. It says and daily in the temple and in every house. They cease not to teach and preach Yahweh Shai. So the apostles, they nonstop daily in the temple preaching the scriptures, man. And that's what we do. Well, we, we do it through the Internet today. We don't have a temple, but we understand spiritually um, the elect. They we um Lord willing, we part of that number, but the elect represent the temple of the Lord. You know, so when you just um, preaching the gospel, right, you're using your phone, you're using social media. Hey, the elect can hear it. Right. Those who, who are supposed to hear it, they're going to hear it, man, because we understand man's goings is of the Lord. You know, so no matter. Don't worry about views. Don't worry about anything carnal like that. You have to just understand Hey, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're preaching the gospel. Right. You had a brother. Um, brothers had a conversation and a brother said, well, you don't even know if people are watching the videos. How do you know if anybody is watching the videos? Right. Which is a, a, a carnal standpoint, you know, because the spiritual man can perceive that the words of the Lord don't doesn't go out vain. Right. They don't go out void. Salaki, they won't return into him void. When the word of the Lord is going out, it's going to accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. You know, even if somebody doesn't watch that video for three years, it might get a view that third year and that brother might need to hear that. Or even if nobody watches it, just you preaching it, you probably needed to hear the things that you were preaching. Right. When the words of the Lord are coming out, it's always profitable, you know. When the word is being preached, it's always profitable. You see, and a spiritual man can, can perceive that, right? Only a carnal man is worrying about um, views and things of that matter. And I'm going to bring this out in um, Isaiah 49 in, in verse 4. It says, then I said, I have labored in vain. And that's how a, a brother might feel. Oh, well, nobody's watching the videos or whatever it may be, right? And that's how Isaiah feel. He said, then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength... For naught and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and my work with my God. But he understood, hey, regardless if nobody is um um hearkening, right, or whatever it may be, hey, my work is still with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? Because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love that you labored in his name, roughly paraphrasing. Let's get that. So understand, man, you gotta just you gotta preach this word, man. You know, and um, this is Hebrews 6 and 10. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, but you have showed toward his name and that you minister to the saints and do minister. So when you're just, um, if you're just taking one day to, to go to the highways and byways or whatever it may be, right? And then through the rest of the week, you're like, I'm just going to do my own thing. But just on the Sabbath, I'm going to teach the word and I'm going to, whatever it may be. But through the rest of the week, you're just doing your own thing, man. Huh? The Lord, the Lord is going to remember that, you know? The Lord is going to, the Lord knows what's going on, man. Right? And that's why you got to really love this thing. And then if you daily think about the Lord, you daily want to preach the gospel, right? You're vexed that you have to go to work because you wish you can just study all day. You know, the Lord knows these things, man. And the Lord is not going to forget that. You know? And um, I want to get this in Luke 9. Luke 9 and um, verse... um. 60 right and this whole thing is actually a beautiful account i'm gonna start from 57 it says and it came to pass that as they went in the way a certain man said unto him lord i will follow thee whatsoever thou goest right so you had a man i said he's gonna he's gonna be a follower of yahweh shai you know like we all we all say when we come into this troop hey we're gonna follow yahweh shai i want to be i want to be like yahweh shai and it says and yahweh shai said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man have not where to lay his head. The Lord is like, hey, I don't even have anywhere to lay my head. I'm always on the move. I'm always um, doing the business of my father. Right. And it says, and he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. So this man has something. He he he's claiming he's going to be a follower of the Lord, but he's putting carnal things over Yahweh Shai. 
right? He said, I need to go bury my father. Yeah, he had the Lord in front of his face telling him to follow him. He's worried about carnal things, man. He's worried about the things of this world, right? And he said unto another, um, Salakia, it says, Salakia, bear with me. It says, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, right? So let these people that spiritually dead bury their dead, man. But go thou and preach the kingdom of the Most High. That's what Yahweh Shai said. You're going to follow me? Go thou and preach the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Go and preach this word. You know? And it says, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. So he's worried about carnal things. And this is what um, brothers could get caught up in a lot of times. They're worried about their wife. They're worried about their family. They're worried about their um their job. They're worried about a video game, whatever it may be, man. You know? And they want to be in a damn, uh, the damn studio, right? They want to be at a damn uh, club, whatever it may be, you know? They're, they're putting these things over preaching the kingdom, right? And it says, um, verse 62, And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. Right? And when you first come into this thing, you have this, this unmatched zeal, man. Right? You're, you're going crazy through the spirit when you first come into this thing. And then you, start, you kind of start to slow up, man. You know, you kind of start to look back in the row. You're worried about um, worldly things. And if you keep that mindset, the Lord... Is, is saying, hey, you're not fit for the kingdom of, of, of heaven, man. You know? So, hey, and like the Lord said, preach the kingdom of the heavenly father, man. You know? And that's what we have to do. Constantly preach the kingdom of the heavenly father. And un understand the power of preaching the, the kingdom. Right? This is 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. And um, I'm going to read verse 18. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Right. So to a lot of people, um, brothers preaching constantly and it, it's, it's foolishness, man. Right. All oh, these brothers, they're just talking to their phone and putting it on Facebook. Right. They're putting it on YouTube. Right. They think they think it's they think it's foolishness, man. But right? they don't see they don't really see the point in it. You had a brother say, um, uh, I just. That's that doesn't really matter. I just like to get amongst the people. I like to go in the hood and um and um the brother said something along those lines, right? Is it really gonna matter, right? Hey, every time you preach the gospel, it matters, man. Right? It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of the most high. But we understand preaching this word is the power of the most high, man. Right. And that's why you have the um the elders and GMS that harp so heavily on, on the videos, man, because they understand if you're constantly and um that's why they have a decree where I believe you have to. uh Yeah, I believe you have to make at least three videos a day. I mean, three videos a week, you know, because because it's, it's the understanding of how powerful and how important the preaching of the gospel is. But the carnal man with the carnal mind, he can't perceive this thing, man. You know, and it says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I want to jump down a little bit. Right. I want to jump down to verse 21. It says, for after that and the wisdom of the most high, the world by wisdom knew not the most high. It pleased the heavenly father by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Right. And this is this is what the most high God ordained. He ordained men to go out and preach. And that's how people, um, the elect ultimately are going to receive salvation. Right through their belief in the preaching. Right? When the word is coming out and they walk by, or they, whether they come by them on a video and they hear that word and they believe, that's how they're going to be saved. All through preaching. Everything is ushered in through the preaching, through the prophesying. You know? And um, that's all I pretty much wanted in here. Um, so we can see constantly throughout the scriptures. How important it is to preach, right? Check this out in Matthew the 24th chapter. I'm gonna read verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. This is red letter, Shahoshai. And all the world. How is the word gonna be preached throughout all the world? It's through the internet. This is why the Lord gave us the internet, right? Nine out of ten, nine out of ten, uh, nine out of nine out of ten um people came into this knowledge, came into this understanding, came into this truth. 
through coming across a video on the internet because this is how the Lord ordained it to be. It says in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So when you read this, you should understand how important it is to continually preach the gospel because that's what's going to usher in the end of this world, man. Right. This, this gospel has to be preached on the four corners of the, of the earth and then shall the end come. The elect have to be sealed before destruction comes upon the earth. How is the how, how is the elect going to be sealed through the preaching of the gospel? You know, through the preaching of the gospel. So you have a lot of brothers that say. They come out of their mouth and say, oh, I'm tired of this captivity. I can't wait to get out of here. Oh, man, I'm tired of working for the white man. Oh, please, I want the Lord to come back. But why aren't you preaching the gospel nonstop so that the Lord can come back, man? You know, are you doing your part to, to usher in the coming of the Lord? You see? Right? So you got to, hey, you got you to gotta understand what's going on in this thing. Go to Revelation, the 14th chapter. Probably going to close out with this. Um, it's Revelation 14 and verse 6. It says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of the heaven, having the everlasting gospel, right? Which is on the earth now to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, right? And this scripture shows that the um, the gospel was brought on the earth through the, through the holy angels, you know? It says, um... Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear the most high and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. And this is what we preach. You know, this is the gospel that we're preaching. We're telling people to hey, come back and fear the, and, 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 and fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. It says, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Um. The great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Right. So it starts off with telling people to fear the Lord. Right. The hour of judgment is coming. Right. We're warning them of the judgment to come. And next thing you know, the judgment comes. Babylon falls. You see. And this all starts with the preaching of the everlasting gospel. It says because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. It says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high. And this is what we're preaching as well. Right. You have to preach the mark. You see, and, and this is deep because. This is this is the part of the everlasting gospel It's warning people about the mark of the beast. It says. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Then the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And how many. How many um, Israelite groups are actually constantly preaching and warning the um, the people um, of the mark of the beast? It's not many, you know, and we understand the apostles, right? And, and um, brothers in great millstone and of like doctrine, they're the main ones putting out this warning. You see, but this is supposed to be part of the everlasting gospel. So that, why don't we see all Israelite groups constantly warning people about the mark? Hey, that's, that, that says a lot, you know, and it says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So ultimately, it starts off with the preaching. Right. And through preaching, you war you warn people of the judgment to come right after the warning is set out. Um, then Babylon falls. You see. Right. And then it goes and it even goes into the mark of the beast. And ultimately, it leads up to the coming of Yahweh Shai. So it, it, this is all started and ushered in by the preaching of the gospel. So um, I just wanted to make this video to exhort brothers to, to preach the gospel as much as possible, man. Right? You should always be preaching this word. And this word should always be on your mind. Let's get that aside right the 39th chapter. Right? Sirach 39. It says... And on um, verse one, it says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. And if you really give your mind to the Lord, you will always be ready and itching to teach the gospel. You'd be itching to bring forth the wisdom that you're getting revealed, um, that you're getting, um, that you're getting from the Lord. You want to bring this forth and teach it to other people. 
right? We don't labor for ourselves, man. We labor for all those that seek learning, right? And if you really labor for all those that seek learning, right? If you really labor for the rest of the elect, right? For the elect, you're going to be bringing and showing forth the knowledge that you have, right? So that they may receive understanding, so that they may grow, you know? And um, I want to go down. So this is dealing with the man that, that has that, that um is occupying the meditation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? And um, I want to jump down. Um Khan, verse 6. Check this out. So this remember, this is dealing with the man that, that is occupied in the meditation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, When the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding, he shall pour out wise sentences. And that's what brothers are doing, right? Just like Paul did in his epistles. Right? This is the when you do these videos, it's a modern day epistle. Right? It's, it's a modern day epistle, man. You see? So it says he will give his heart to resort. Er, Salakia, verse 6 again. It says, when the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. Why? Because he's constantly giving his mind to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, he shall pour out wise synthesis. And that's what brothers do. Right? Through the videos. Right? Through the preaching. It says, um, Salakia. And give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer, right? And it's another one I wanted as well. Um, I believe. Um, bear with me. And that, that might have been the one I wanted, Salaki. So right, but that's the point, man. If you give your mind to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you're going to pour out wise sentences, man. You know? And um, Lord willing, this is edifying. Right. And the point is, preach the gospel, man. Right. That's what we that's what we have to do to usher in the coming, the, the coming of Yahweh Shai. It's, it's power in preaching the gospel, man. You know, Lord willing, this is edifying. Right. To the, um, the mighty Akim Wa Akwat that tune in to listen to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right. And uh, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. Right. And um, Shalom to the elect.